there's Mando, the arguably the best contractor in all the galaxy. <laughs> Just look at him. He goes in, takes five jobs, gets them all done, gets paid, and moves on to the next. It's my kind of contractor. Um, and now, if you guys haven't seen this series, I want you guys to get up, go home, <laughs> pour yourself a glass of spots, yeah, turn on the lights, and binge it. Show is so freaking amazing. <laughs> All right, anyway, so obviously I'm a big believer in contracting. In fact, that's why I'm part of Drupal Contractors. Drupal Contractors was started with a simple idea. Uh, I'm sorry. My partner and I have amassed a great network of, of peers that all share a common love, Drupal. We care about the project and community while providing a sustainable income for each of our families. As our network grew, we quickly realized that there was a natural alignment happening. We are continuing to get amazing contracts and developing these key partnerships with Drupal agencies that need a staff augmentation. At the same time, <clears throat> we developed great relationships with people who we knew were ideal for that work. Now, I, I love my work. I, my job is to connect these two groups and it satisfies a need on both sides. I honestly couldn't think of a better way to spend my day helping out my friends. And the thing that makes all of this work is relationships. And I would argue that relationships are the key to being a successful contractor. More specifically, the quality of those relationships. So I'd like to begin by developing our relationship. So my name is Albert Volkman. I am a software engineer who began his professional career here in Orlando in 2007, which means that I've worked with PHP now for professionally for 13 years. 12 of those years have been focused on Drupal, while also working a lot in the contribution space. I have over 100 commits to core across 6, 7, and 8. And over the last nine years, I've been in varying leadership positions. Within the last two years, I became a business owner. Business owner. Um, and throughout all those years, I've done freelancing work, but it's always been supplementary income. Uh, I'm originally from Southern Illinois. Uh, actually, my best friend Matt is sitting right there. Wait, Matt. No. You're part of the show now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm originally from Illinois, and, and during college, that's actually when Matt and I met. Um, I took a semester off to work a, as a guide at Star Tours, and that's where I met my now future wife, then future wife. Um, after college, I moved to Orlando, and in 2007, I got married. I have three children. I have a six-year-old named Rebecca, a four-year-old named Mary Beth, and a very terrible two-year-old AJ. <laughs> <coughs> It's funny, all my other kids were terrible at their threes, but he's knocking off the terrible too. Anyway, so I've been a tech nerd since I was a chubby young kid learning DOS on a TRS-80 oh. Model 3 uh, that my dad brought home one day. I learned PHP later in college and haven't looked back, although I've strained with Node and Python at varying points. Uh, I enjoy running, biking, and rock climbing. Uh, I love my kids, getting my kids a nerd out about Star Wars. Um, I was a competitive gymnast for six years, and uh, in the first six months of this year, actually, we just um, moved from Orlando to St. Augustine, um, just out of Airbnb, so we wanted to be near the beach, so it's the start of my year. All right, so enough blabbering about myself. I'd like to get an idea of who I'm speaking to. Uh, who in this room is currently moonlighting in addition to their full-time job? Cool. cool. Um, all right. How many of you are now considering moving from that freelancing to a full-time position? Depends on what you're fine. And then how many of you are already contractors? One. Cool. All right, well, hopefully, I mean, obviously, you're here to learn about contracting and what I'm talking about today. No, okay. Denied. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they heard me like, oh, man, that's terrible in there. Um, so what we're going to talk about today will be applicable to all of you, and it becomes increasingly important as you start relying more and more on your freelance income. I'm going to focus in on the importance of relationships and how that affects the sustainability of each of your business. I just want to put this slide up here because it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> all right, so before starting anything, the first step toward your self-employed utopia is to pick out a niche product that is in high demand. Typically what people do is they refine a skill during their 9 to 5 job or possibly get involved uh, in an open source product. Since this is a Drupal conference, I'm going to assume that the niche that the majority of you have chosen is Drupal. Me too. Uh, personally, I got involved with Drupal back in 2007. I was working for a local marketing agency as a PHP developer, 
but I spent most of my time working on a .NET product called Ektron. <laughs> yeah, got some groans, that's good. <laughs> uh, after working at that agency for uh, a little over a year, uh, one of my coworkers asked if I could help out with translations on a site using Drupal. Actually, Andrew Riley, if anybody knows. Yeah. Um, now, I first heard of Drupal several years earlier while watching a TV show called The Screensavers. Uh, one of the hosts, Leo Laporte, has talked about, I talked a lot about Drupal on several episodes and on his podcast. I think Drupal was at like version 4.7 at that point. Uh, it seemed interesting at that point, but I had never really looked into it. Now, fast forwarding to that first marketing job, I started to see what a great flexible tool it was. I also made the decision at that point that I wanted to pick an open source project to start getting involved with, and so I chose Drupal. Now, what did that mean? Well, I, I started learning the language of Drupal, now, not the programming language, but how the community worked together. Uh, I learned how the bugs were tracked, which at that point was CVS, and I had only worked with SVN up until that point. Um, so I got to learn a new tool. Then I got to learn how the uh, community communicated, which at that point was IRC. So I was hopping on the Drupal channel on Freenode and getting to know everybody. Which I got to know some amazing people uh, who were willing to be patient with me, uh, namely XJM and Blanket, <coughs> which I think are both at Alquia now, right? Um, I got involved with core contribution hours, which I listened to and answered uh, any questions that people were asking that I might already know, and I got to learn new things. Uh, I started re-rolling patches and making small code changes, and I remember the day I finally got my name on a commit. I was really excited. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I started helping out with my local camp. Uh, I started attending the Drupal cons, and I got to meet great people. I formed relationships, and I formed friendships. And I had a tool and a community that I was deeply invested in. Is that showing up? It's a little bit like a dark slide. It's, if you can't see it, it's uh, Mando collecting his credits from his hard work that he's done. Oh. <coughs> Forgot the different, there's a couple of different currencies post Empire. I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head. Anyway. All right, so after you picked out your tool, now the next step is to determine your worth. Now, I'm sure everybody in this room is probably worth far more than what they're receiving. <laughs> but unfortunately, unfortunately, we're in a capitalistic society, so supply and demand dictate uh, what you're able to charge. I struggled a lot with this initially um, because it's, it's hard to put a price tag on your time. So what I did was start to ask my peers what they charged, and I started thinking about what my full-time job was paying me, and while also, you know, and it's very important to consider the benefits and the taxes that you know, go unseen. So for example, let's say you have a salary of 80000 at that full-time job. The quick conversion to take that from a full or a salary char amount to a um, hourly right is to divide it by two and then divide that by a thousand. So the eighty thousand dollar job would be a forty dollar an hour uh, if you're working hourly. However you're not actually taking home eighty thousand a year at your full time job due to those taxes and you're, you're not receiving the benefits that you would if you had a full time job. So make sure that you take that consideration as you're deciding on your hourly rate. Uh, Another thing that I've noticed that with my experience is that you start equating your worth with effort instead of the actual hours spent. So when I get presented with an opportunity, I can generally set a value based on effort, which makes estimating far easier. That's to say, when you're able to hone in your skills, prove yourself, and find the right clients, you'll actually end up spending less time but making more money. Ooh. Ooh. Making money is good. <laughs> All right, so finding the right client. Could argue if that's right, Glenn. <laughs> um, all right, so let me share a story. Early in on my career, I landed what I felt like was a dream client. The project was interesting. Uh, we were building a tool that was going to help out handicapped children, and I was going to make plenty of money in the process. However, due to my greenness in the field, I quickly tanked the project. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I didn't communicate properly. I didn't set the client expectations. Uh, and I went way past my presented timeline. So needless to say, I lost the project and the client wasn't interested in working with me going forward and, and who could blame them. Now, on the other side, I have another story. Um, I had contracted with a small company and the project was relatively straightforward. Uh, it, I estimated it well, it was delivered on time. However, the end result was yet another lesson learning experience. The client continued to nitpick throughout the project and kept increasing feature scope. The whole, they took two months to pay me and even after like phone calls and emails and increasingly frustrated communications, you know, 
it just wasn't going anywhere. So anyway, that was a mess. <laughs> now, it's easy to say that that story went sour based solely because of the client. But there's no reason to play the victim in this situation either. What I know now is that smaller businesses tend to be more emotionally connected to the outcome of the project. If the person you're working with is the person who's writing a check out of their account, the app hurts far more than another business who is simply expensing an account for your work. And they're gonna have much higher expectations on what those dollars are doing for their bottom line. So, you know, early on in your career, and I'd say probably most people's career, um, I was quick to accept any opportunity that I managed to come across. And it's easy to see why. When you're young and hungry, any opportunity is at least an opportunity. And you're not really in a dominant position to be choosy. When going alone, this will be the reality you'll face until you learn from these experiences. I'm not saying that you shouldn't support smaller businesses, but these things are something you can be aware of and it's something that can be properly managed with, you guessed it, a good relationship. Um, now, as you may or may not already be aware, you, becoming self-employed largely turns you into a salesman. And selling is far different from software engineering. As a developer, I'm typically uh, used to receiving a set of marching orders for a problem to be solved, and then I set out to resolve that task. As a contractor, you have to double down on your soft skills or relationships and people management. I like to think of business development in something like a dating mindset. You gotta get to know your client, find out what they like, what they don't like, listen to them, how are they hurt? <laughs> <laughs> Um, have them tell them you know, all about their past. So developing that connection is what determines um, if that one project becomes a partnership or simply a one-time thing. If you're the person they see as not only uh, the person who can solve a business need, but also someone who's affable and easy to work with, then that is the relationship that's gonna weather those inevitable future issues. And issues. <laughs> as I mentioned before, things happen. Deadlines are missed, items are miscommunicated, Tempers flare. Uh, how you handle those issues is a big part of that. And in the case of any healthy relationship, it's important that you're confident in your standings, but also flexible enough to accept any mistakes that you may have made. Being the upright person who's willing to own up to a mistake will speak to your character. And if the client is willing to see that and, and hoping that you weren't fired, that's only going to embolden you in your relationship. Which leads me to my next topic. Identifying your strengths and weaknesses. As I mentioned earlier, you'll find yourself accepting any and every job that comes your way. Because being a salesman and finding work is difficult. However, what comes from those experiences is a wealth of knowledge of yourself and your career. For example, in my experience, I haven't done very well building out e-commerce solutions. And I found that typical clients typically have little grace when it comes to whenever sorry, their money relies on their income sales or online sales. Uh, so therefore now, I, I actually turn down e-commerce offers right away, or redirect, redirect the clients to a partner that I know they're better suited for. By saying no, I'm communicating to my network that I know my value offering, and I'm also looking out for their best interests. In this way, I gain the respect and I establish myself as a leader in the areas that I am expert on. Now, the great part about further focusing on a niche of a niche, and then becoming known for that, is that your network will immediately think of you when they identify a need from one of their partners. You can think of it almost like a non-scammy, multi-level marketing scheme. <laughs> tell three friends, and they'll tell three friends. And your network becomes your strongest sales tool, which over time will hopefully get you to a place where you'll no longer have to do that initial difficult part of sales and the, that we all generally dislike doing. All right, so you focused in on your skill, marketed yourself well, built a network, and have landed an amazing project. So what's next? Contracts. All right, I got another story for you. Uh -oh. So after college, but before I got married, I was living with two friends in a complex apartment. we have been living there for almost a month when they decided they wanted to terminate our leasing agreement early and instead get a house. At that point, I was working for myself, and I didn't have a lot of expendable income, so I didn't really want to pay the early termination fee that came with in your contract. So it just worked out that I had two other friends who were also looking for a place to stay, and they simply swapped out. Now, the more experienced Albert 
would have seen through the process <laughs> of making sure that the new roommates signed their names to the apartment contract, but the surgeon out of Albert did not. And when it came time to move out, I later received collection notices, because I had the wrong address and it was a whole thing, uh, due to the damage that they had done to the apartment, but they weren't legally responsible because they were never officially lived there. Luckily, the charges were minimal, but yet another very important lesson was learned that day. Always get agreements in writing. Now, for a lot of people, dealing with contracts can feel overwhelming to the legal language required. However, there's plenty of boilerplate contracts for software engineers available online. And further, hiring a lawyer to review the contract that you decide on will pay dividends. It's actually a, a write-off that you can do. Contracts protect both you and the client that you work with when the, excuse me, the inevitable issues that we discussed earlier arise. Now, the contract should include the two most important things from any engagement. The question of what is expected from your work and when it's due, and then when and how you're getting paid. With those two items clearly defined, uh, a lot of the basic issues can be avoided. All right, now I'm sure all of you love tracking your time and asking people to give you money, right? That's the best part. Just like most full-time jobs, you'll need to make sure you're accurately tracking how your time is spent. You, know, you don't want to work all day and not get paid, right? Uh, if, you've, if you've had the opportunity to work for an established agency, you may already be familiar with some existing tools. And if those tools are available to you, by all means, use those. My recommendation is to pick a tool and stay with it for at least a year. It's easy to get started with one tool and see another tool that does a handful of things that you like better and attempt to switch. The important piece here is just to make sure that you're consistently tracking your time, sending the invoices out to your clients, and then making sure you close the loop by tracking the payments as they come in. I found that it's actually surprisingly easy to get into your day, work three to four hours, move on to something else, close your laptop, and a week will go by without you logging your time, and then you'll be at a loss for how that time was spent. Oh, I'm going to make Julia happy. I log my hours for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's helpful for your work style, use the timer. I'm using a timer right now. I'm 17 minutes into my phone. Ooh, I'm talking. Um, several members of voicing softwares include one as part of their offering. Like for example, at Dribble Contractors, we use FreshBooks. And again, whatever you decide to use, just make sure that you're consistent. I'll put you it up there. All right, now as our First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt once famously said, with great freedom comes great responsibility. And one of the great things that I love about having, that I love about having a full-time position is that somebody is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you. They're finding the clients, signing the contracts, organizing the work and sprints, budgeting, all that. Then there's normally a person who takes that work, turns it into tasks, and then hands it to you, the developer. Also, the company you're working for will normally mandate a certain number of billable hours that is expected of you every week. The key to all of this is that you have accountability. If you don't meet the expectations of your job, then you no longer have a job. Similarly, if you don't meet the expectations of your clients, you'll no longer have them as clients. <clears throat> so, however, what, what some contractors will find is that without someone divvying up the work for them and setting their expectations, and they have a hard time sticking to a regular schedule. With the freedom to set your own hours, it's easy to wake up on a morning, decide that you're not really at the task, or that there's something else you'd rather be doing, and always end up doing laundry somehow. <laughs> it's, like, it's like an easy job, you get it done, you put it away, and it's done. <laughs> um, but, and, and, you know, and all that's actually okay. It's, like, it's one of the wonderful things about living the contractor life. However, if you allow that to run unchecked, you'll quickly find yourself in a bad predicament. So how do you keep that from happening? For me, the biggest motivating factor was determining my why. Sure, I'm, I'm doing this for freedom and a paycheck, but what I found that when things got hard, that really wasn't enough. And I know this sounds cliche, but what, what really drives me is my family. I have a, a wife and children and several financial responsibilities. Uh, and knowing that these people I love are dependent upon my success causes me to, be, to help find that focus. So I'd strongly recommend reflecting on your why and doing whatever it takes to keep that at the forefront of your mind as you're working. So, if all of this sounds overwhelming to you, let me offer you a new hope. <laughs> Drupal Contractors is a partner that will, play, will take on a large portion of these challenges I discussed today. 
instead of working on developing relationships and finding new work, we're doing that constantly for you. So you can focus on building your relationship with one entity, us, and then enjoy the fruits of our labors. Instead of having to find a tool to track your time and invoice your clients, you simply log in to FreshBooks, and then we write you a check. When you join our team, you also become a member of our network, which affords you access to our Slack channel, which instantly gives you a small network of like-minded individuals who are, willing, are doing the same work as you. So we're a group of contractors that is run by two contractors looking to provide quality, triple con 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 contracting work as I trip over my tongue. So join us. I have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Yes, Mr. Archer. Healthcare? Healthcare. Like, is it just still a mess? getting your own and dealing with that? Like, how do you personally handle that? I personally? Uh, well, I have what's called a needs sharing program. Yeah. And it's kind of like, goes back to the original idea of what um, insurance is. Like, from a group of people, there's somebody that gets sick and they all come together to help that one person. So like every month I get a, a letter saying, send your check to this person. And they give you the address. And they like write out a card and say, you know, I hope you're getting better. I'm sorry about your broken arm or you know, whatever it is. Congratulations on your new baby. And we send a check directly to them. And we pay like a, I forgot what the fee is, it's like a, a yearly fee of like $75 or something just for the administrative work. And so there's really, that, that's, the, that's all the money that I know is not going to somebody, but the majority of my money is going directly to somebody. So, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Drupal contractors, what, takes like a certain amount off the top? and like that's how you're making money, so is that like a set amount, or is that negotiated per developer? Um, there's a general idea that we aim for, and then at a different point, I mean, sometimes we can negotiate that up or down. Yeah. It. Like, cause sometimes, you know, you, you hit a rock and hard place where you find a really good fit, but like, we're only gonna be making like $5, you know, something really yeah. minimal, yeah. but we ultimately are more focused on that relationship, mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll kind of bend to make that work, so. But obviously, at the same time, you have to, you know, you, you, have to say, you have to say your value, and yeah. I mean, again, like the thing that really geeks me out about Drupal contractors is, is that like I know a lot of people that are looking for work, and so I can get them jobs. So, I mean, it's like that feel good, warm fuzziness. So, yes. Drupal covers a lot of things, right? So, like, is it uh, is it Drupal with like React with the flavor, or like uh, like Drupal front end? Like, what type of positions are there? In Drupal. Yeah. So the majority of our work has been back end development. Uh, we do, I would say, probably about 10, uh, 10 to 20 percent of our work comes in for front end development. Uh, we actually just had a um, a React and Ruby on Rails position come down the route. And we actually knew a Ruby on Rails guy, so I was like, all right, well, we, we may like expand into other verticals at different points, but you know, we just we know the Drupal community, so it makes sense for us to focus on. So. Yes. Do you have like uh, requirements to be a contractor or a certain level of experience? So there's no we don't have any official like you have to have four years of yeah. experience or you know a bachelor's degree or whatever. It's more so like. Um, I, I'm being like the CTO and having the technical experience. I'm usually the person like doing a soft interview, and um, like I'll, I'll ask you basic questions about your work style and see some of the code that you've done, and kind of get a feel for what what I think or what I think where you're at. I mean, you come to me and say, you know, I'm a junior or I'm a senior, and then I would need to validate that to the best of my ability. Obviously, I'm not a developer. Uh, I'm more like an implementer. How does it value as a contractor? Is there any opportunities as an implementer? Oh, within oh, the, the example, opportunities that we come across? setting up the hardware, setting up the structure, Oh, like DevOps, like building out servers and stuff? what you call DevOps? Yeah. Okay. We, we do have a couple. Um, we had one AWS position come across. Um, Anything on Google? AWS is Amazon. And, well, G AWS is Amazon. Oh. I use Google Compute. Google, Compute yeah. Engine or Kubernetes. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't had any personally, but my partner may have. Oh, okay. So, not, and especially not recently, I haven't seen anything more else for it. So I guess I'm going to go along. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe you just need to switch to Drupal. <laughs> so, 
I got another question. So with um, contracting in general, uh, like going through a staff and like how do you how do you, when you talk about knowing your worth? Mm -hmm. How do you how do you know your worth? Uh, how do you negotiate that with one of these contractors that call you and say, look, uh, uh, here's what the job pay, you know. Like uh, like they call you and say we're paying forty dollars, forty five dollars an hour. Right. Uh, do you negotiate? Like as a contractor, mm -hmm. how do you how do you uh, and, and may I ask you tonight now the W two or like you know so what can you walk me through some of that uh, negotiations and stuff like that? Like how to present yourself and make sure that you yeah yeah I so I, I mean I always go into those kind of conversations already having a number in my head of like what what um, what I think I'm worth and then um, they'll say that and depending on like kind of where you're at in your career again talking about being young and hungry versus being more established if you're young and hungry and you're like okay well I'll take an extra five or ten thousand dollars to have that experience and develop that partnership you know kind of you kind of have to weigh that out a little bit if that's worth it to you um, I got to let go uh, a client this week because they were only paying me 70 bucks an hour which sounds really like first worldish. Like, that's not worth my time, 70 bucks an hour, but you know, for somebody who's new, if they came across $70 an hour, they'd be like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so if somebody calls you with a job, say, hey, look, I got a job. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's your pay? What's your, what's your expected pay? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that, that's, that's hard. That, yeah, yeah, those are the jobs that you get. Like, what you know, what's 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 what you looking to make? Yeah. Right. So, what do you? How do you? Where did you get that value? I know you said you looked at you know if you were making eighty thousand dollars and you cut it down basically to forty or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but like, how do you know the value? Especially with values changing, like it seemed like from four years ago, like values seemed like they kind of just really got like you said seventy dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, when like four years ago, thirty five forty was the the, the the norm or whatever. Right. I didn't know what area you were, and yeah. So yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a little different since we're at a world stage. Like you know, somebody in uh, a third world country could work for a company in San Francisco, and you could. They're obviously going to try to talk you down because of your locale, but I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. I think it makes the the numbers. Um, Seem to jump around a lot, but at the same time, it, it kind of helps stabilize it a little bit because we're all kind of you know, working on our world economy now. Um, I mean, it's it's all negotiating. Like when you go in, and just like I'm pretty good at like when I talk to somebody, I can get them to talk, and then the more they're talking, usually, that's what I want. I want yeah, yeah get them to talk. Give me the talk. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta wine and dine them. <laughs> <laughs> Find out about their past. Yeah. So if I'm looking to bring in additional dual talent, I reach out to you guys. Matchmaker. Yep. Um, do you have a? Do you set the, the rate then with the, the contractor, or, or that's the, we would talk about the front end a little bit more on the scope of the project? Sure. Yeah. Like a lot of times, agencies will come to us and say, "Hey, we got this position. We can spend up to fifty dollars an hour, or sixty dollars an hour, or whatever it is." And then we'll go to our talent pool and say, "Hey, um, we, can we you know make this work?" Um, and so it really depends. Like that's the, the, the weird thing about this business too is like. It's in a constant state of flux. There's always somebody that's either looking, or they might be looking in a month. Uh, we have somebody now, but we don't want to have somebody in a month. And then reaching out and building that, it's it's a juggling act. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, yeah. If you have an agency, you would just come and sign a, an agreement with us, and then we would start. Like the, we don't charge the search; it just for once the person's placed. Yeah. We have done actually a, full t a couple of full-time placements now, but we generally it's, it's kind of focus on contracting. So. Just because um, you mentioned contracts, have you ever had somebody like bail on their contract or like crash and burn? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 just say no, we're done. <laughs> I I've had one that didn't meet one of the terms in the contract. Okay. Um, and how do you how do you handle that? Is that like it's small claims? <laughs> And so, like that's you have to kind of make a decision if you want to go down that route or not. Um, so, in general, like contracting is just like you know the gentleman's agreement. Like you know, I'm going to do this and you're going to do this. And by someone not honoring that, then you know you, you kind of. I mean, Truthful is a pretty small community, relatively small community. So they'll hear about you and go, like, oh, "Well, I doesn't really pay, so I'm not going to suggest any of my peers to go work there." Right. So a little bit of that is self-regulating. Um, okay. 
but yeah, there, there's still some shysters. <laughs> so, are are you and or your contractors do they are they willing to like sign NDAs for projects? Yep. We do, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, like people won't even start talking with us until we sign a day, and we're, we're fine. I assume okay. as much yeah. as some people. Don't. Anybody else? Oh, oh. I would say the website is uh, uh, DrupalContractors.com. It is uh, really easy to sign up to be, to be part of the game. We go in there. Uh, no. Whether you, you need uh, staff for staff augmentation, or you want to be the staff that's augmenting. Uh, augmentors and augmentees, welcome. DrupalContractors.com, sign up. Yeah, when you, and we sign up on our app, then uh, it'll send you an invite to our Slack, and then we'll, we'll talk to you. And, and, and for disclosure, I work for Drupal Contractors. <laughs> Do you get contracts for like performance analysis and things like that? Uh, not that I've seen. Sorry? I'm, I'm asking things that's... <laughs> Something that would yeah. be applicable. Um, so we love a full arsenal, so you know, more people sign up for more What skills. about like, uh, cyber security, like hacking and things like that? Um, yeah, like I, I, I haven't really seen... We, yeah, have no, you seen any... If we knew we had somebody else? on hand, then you know, we, we yeah. could upsell existing contracts, or we could take a contract that we might bring on board. We can call to somebody who's on the staff, but yeah. if you come on board, we're like, hey, now we got a guy. Well, I'm, I'm signed in to Drupal Contract. Oh, okay. I didn't see when you select, you know, whatever that's applicable to your background. I didn't see these things gotcha. in there as as, as an option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll connect it with Chris. I think I have a little conversation there. Yeah. Are you are you in our Slack or not? I'm signed. I mean, I uh, registered on your Google Contract. I mean, sorry. Uh, 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 Drupal Contractors. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I'm um, just. Uh, I this full of Google. That's <laughs> Google contractors. That's where you make a lot more money. Well, not really. <laughs> not really. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe on my side, I'm not making much. <laughs> yeah, if you're interested, you can reach out. Um, my email or you can hit the contact yeah, link I'll on the side. Or, I'll take your email. I mean, yeah. Cool. Um, All right. So these are the mandatory. Oh, sorry. Bye. What are the terms? Is it like I, being the contractor myself? Like I hate I hate ninety day terms. Like what what are the terms? Uh, the pay terms? Is it once a, every, once a two weeks or once a month? Like what's the? So uh, actually, this is a big conversation that me and my partner just had. Um, so typically, like our, our terms that we send to our, our different agencies or the people we work with are typically not thirty. Okay, thank you. Um, some agencies will wait until day 31. <laughs> yeah, so it's 60 days. So, so, hell yeah, it'll take a lot longer than expected. So, um, what we've done is we've taken out a line of credit now, so we're trying to make sure that as it has, you know, it being your direct livelihood, we want to make sure you get paid more often and get to, like, you know, most people are used to a two week cadence. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I'm saying, so, so, net 30 means that. You, you turn in the invoice at 30 days, and then you have another 30 days where they pay, or like how does? Yeah, so net 30 is from when they receive it. Okay, so yeah. you got 60 days before you get that first check. Yes, that would well, I, that could be the case. It depends yeah. on their cycle and, and all that. Probably so. from when they they validated it's good. There's a lot of especially big agencies will sit on it for 30 days, right. then decide okay, this is a legitimate invoice. Hours are right, and then the 30 day clock will start. Again. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that could that could be a little bit yeah. misconstrued yeah. one way or the other. I've had mid 90s and I was like, oh shoot, that's crazy. That's intense. But that's for the big companies, a lot of the, like four only did mid 90s. Yeah. Yeah. I have a net, we have a net 60 client that mm -hmm. can't do but when the 60 starts, is, you know. <laughs> yeah, cash flow quickly. Instead of being like net 100 sometimes, I think. <laughs> cash flow quickly becomes a problem because people are expecting their money for the work that they did and you're still waiting to get the money, so it's. Right. Yeah. All right, so yeah, this is uh, our mandatory slide. I want you guys all to be excellent to each other. Nah. Don't be mean. Um, and then uh, talking about how getting into contracting, if you decide to go the open source project route, Sunday would be a great day for you to wet your feet. Um, I was actually, I used to be involved in a lot of these. I haven't been able to since I have kids, but <laughs> kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is a great way to kind of uh, find out about the community. Um, you can kind of break that ice of so getting past ma making that first patch and feeling you know, the little imposter syndrome. Yeah. This is really helpful for that. 
that's it for me. Woo! Thanks, guys. Which, which medicine are you?